<laughs> Nasty. <laughs> what up, everybody? <laughs> As we start this special edition of Podcast Champs, Damien and Dio joined by our special guest, the Cruiser Cat. We have a, a, a interesting topic of discussion today. And Dio said it best where he said, nasty <laughs> nasty because i'll be honest i don't know a lot about this topic that's why we decided to get cruiser cat on because she would know more than me and apparently dio knows more than me so the topic at hand that started off last night for me was learning about tampons okay so that's the joke in it of itself I didn't know anything about flow. I didn't know anything about wings or the little butterfly effect or the string that comes out or whether or not it hurts going up inside. I don't know any of these things. This cat is looking at me off air and uh, off she camera. Still, she didn't even tell you about like the diva cups or anything like that. No, nah, I know nothing about that. Oh, uh, I know yeah, nothing that's about the game no changer diva right there. No. <laughs> game changer. So I was given a, a, a very good tutorial by my girlfriend of, about what tampons are and how they work and how they, I was, cause the biggest thing I saw when I saw the, the flap thing pull out, I, I thought, wow, that little strip is going to stop the river of blood to come shooting out your body, bro. Like you, you can clean up so much. Like if you don't have paper towels, if somebody got like, like if you got a, a spill and like, oh like a tampon oh or rather like a pad can soak up an insane amount so like <laughs> when we were in high school right yeah oh if somebody got a, like a bloody nose mm -hmm. if they got sent to, if like just if they got sent to like the nurse or like if it happened on like the football field like the coach used to just br keep tampons just and like what? shove it up your nose because it soaks up everything like they soak up everything, but yeah, this, 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 this is a very special episode, uh, <laughs> because not even 24 hours later, one Priscilla Kelly, for those who don't know who is a professional wrestler, I guess she's based out of Florida or, or the South thereabouts. Uh, yeah. her gimmick is that she is a nasty, a goth gypsy. I want to call her a living succubus. If you want to call it that that's fine but yeah. deal calls it nasty yeah but yeah. Yeah. not even 24 hours after i've had this discussion she pulls what looks to be i thought was a dead rat during a match out of her trunks turns out it was a tampon, tampon. and then she proceeds to take said used tampon used tampon air quotes and put it in her opponent's mouth who was bound to a chair so that just necessitated me and Dio to get on here and then have Kat chime in because, well, I'm a dude. I don't stick tampons anywhere. And number two, because my dumbass just learned about them yesterday, what better people to ask than two of my best friends on Twitter? Yeah. So I will start <laughs> off by saying this. What did we think about seeing Priscilla's move? Because I guess that's like her version of the mandible claw now. And uh, what do we take from that? Who wants to start? <laughs> Kat, go ahead, Kat. All right. Um, I think, my, I mean, my first reaction, obviously, was like, you know that, that Snoop Dogg clip, that like two second where he's like, who? Like, right. that, was, <laughs> that, that was literally me. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I, it's just. It's a good way to get people to talk about you, I guess. Yeah, right. <laughs> with that, um, it's too, it's wild. I don't know. I'm just gonna file that under Caucasian nonsense <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> because, like, that's literally like, <laughs> like, I, for her to do it for the this tuna. Like for a second of all, the girl that she did it to, her name is Tuna. Tuna. Right. Yeah. So, so she gave the tuna, tuna to Tuna. <laughs> The tuna to tuna. And I'm like, this whole situation, where did this happen? What, like, what, what weird bubble is this going on in? I don't know. I don't know what's going on. It's just, it's just so much. Yeah. So yeah. Like, for me, I've seen Priscilla Kelly wrestle a couple of times. Yes. So this is par for the course. Like this is y'all, for those of you that only got to see her in the Mae Young Classic, you got like uh, me and me and Kat were talking about this off air before. Like you got interview version 
or Priscilla mm-hmm. Kelly. That was somebody that's trying to make a good impression, you know, trying to get a job. Uh, <laughs> the rest of the time, she is just straight up nasty. Like, I, yeah. so last time I saw her wrestle, it was her, Kiara Hogan, and Harlow, and she literally spent the entire match molesting them. Like, it was, I wanted to call the police. I could have taken the the clips that I've had and sold them online, and I could have sold them joints on Brazzers. Like, it was nasty. <laughs> like, she this is what she does she licks people all the time like there is Mm -hmm. not a single match where she hasn't licked someone hasn't licked someone's crotch anus armpit she goes for like the 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 dankest parts of the body that's her target every single time yes all the crevices yeah all the crevices (laughs) and the cracks and that's all fair i was saying that she reminds me of of the nasty boys because remember back in the day yeah they would put the opponent's you know face in a person's armpit right so i I was talking about this earlier i saw a match between her and holiday when i was living in new york and if you know holiday's gimmick she's essentially just as freaky if not just dead you know And, and every time priscilla tried to do one of her shenanigans Holiday was more intrigued by it, right. you know, because opponents would get all freaked out about it and like, I don't want to touch that. Holiday was more along the lines of give me more. Right. So that kind of threw that kind of threw Priscilla off her game. And it wound up being a really good match. So it was at a shine show. Uh, if you if people get a chance to check it out, it's somewhere on the shine. I think shine 70. I'm not mistaken, but it was pretty good. But this is definitely Paul for the course. But people forget because they romanticize the term gypsy. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, she is a living, breathing gypsy. Now, right. Deal, you yeah. mentioned the different types of gypsies, right? Can you let so the like, viewers know? Because so you've got like a bunch of different things. So like the original, I guess you'd say, terminology for like gypsies were like the Romani people of like Eastern Europe, Eastern Southern Europe ish. Mm-hmm. Like they were essentially like the brown skin people, and you still have in like a bunch of countries where like gypsies are persecuted and they just yeah. People don't like them. So, but like it's here. So in the UK and in America, gypsies have a different meaning. So like in the UK, gypsies are like also called travelers. And like the closest thing, if you've seen the movie Snatch, the Pikes, okay, those are gypsies. Uh, if you know who, if you watch boxing, uh, Tyson Fury, king of the gypsies, yes. he is also... The Pikes, travelers, gypsies, they all, it's all the same term. And in America, you have the same, it's essentially like the same thing too. You have the gypsies and like the closest thing that people would call them here is like trailer trash. Like that's, that's the, the, you know, the term that people use for them negatively. But yeah, usually like if you go to a lot of trailer parks, especially in the South, you will find many a gypsy. So there's like negative connotations that come along with them and whatnot, but yeah, Priscilla Kelly is she is absolutely one of them. <laughs> she is absolutely well, wasn't one of them. She, she was on one of that like my gypsy like gypsy, my gypsy wedding, wedding. Shows, right? Right, yeah. yeah, yeah. But now she's married to Darby Allen, I think. Yes, yes. Darby Allen. Mm. Nasty together. together. Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, I Both feel like because yeah. you got one that's just nasty and matches, and the other one does not care for his own body. I I have seen Darby Allen do things where I was like, he's trying to die. That's all I can, you know, like mm-hmm. he yeah. just decided mid match. I don't want to be in this uh, ring anymore. I am going to go and climb this pole to the top of the goddamn building and then leap into the ring and miss. Yeah. I was like, he's trying to die. He yeah. is trying to die. Wait, he, did, he missed. He did all that. Miss. All that. Yeah, it was because that was the spot. It was to, dive to hit the opponent and the opponent was like no <laughs> just move out the way and he like there's one clip in particular it was during like a death match mm-hmm. he goes up to the second story he's he is tied to a chair he oh. gets up on the railing you know and then dives back was, was that the mlw show we yeah, were at Kat? i was there for that yeah. and okay. we were both like <laughs> he's trying to die yeah mm-hmm. I remember I remember being at a show, it was Evolve, and he wrestled Brian Cage, and Brian Cage gorilla press slammed him onto the stage of the boom from the ring. 
and lands in front of me and civil fandom's feet. And we're screaming like, holy crap, Darby's dead. And you see Gabe Sapolsky run out and, and just kind of like whispering in his ear. And you hear Darby go, yeah, I'm good. And I'm like, how are you good? He's how not are human. you good? <laughs> like, I well, think like that they might actually be into like some arcane sorcery type stuff mm. because there's no other way that he could survive all of these things. There's no he way. He's like one of those skateboarder kids and every skateboarder I ever met is like indestructible. Mm -hmm. Like it does not matter what happens to them. They just, yeah. I'm fine. And you're like, Bro. how? It's like, sir, I literally watched you. You fell. You scorpioned. Your butt, your, your feet touched <laughs> the back of your head. You're back of your head and you're okay. He's like, come on, I'm good, bro. Don't worry. I'm like, no, no. He's like, what? I do that yoga with Adrian joint. Don't worry about that. Right. <laughs> Wow. Hey, teach me. <laughs> you know, I do yoga with Adrian and it's pretty dang good, but I don't think I could survive falling off a second second balcony. Adrian no. can't pay you for that. Yeah, yeah, no, they don't they don't pay me enough. And that's actually another question that Dio and I had off air uh yeah. was about because you know, Kat, you know you have you like, oh that's some I file I file that away from like white person nonsense or whatever the case may be. <laughs> so you never see and maybe maybe I'm missing and Dio's missed it, but we never see people of color who do death matches. It's only aside like from Shane Strickland occasionally, it's but handful. yeah. So it goes back to saying, what would wouldn't you be willing to do for your career? I'm sorry, yeah. death matches. Nah, man, I I, I can't rocks with that. I, I don't want to go like through fake lives. I do one. I do one to test the water. Uh huh. I'd get. I'd like step on a thumbtack and it'd be over. I'd be like, ah. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, like, I remember seeing like when Shane Strickland had like the hellscape death match where he like got slammed through the glass and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. And even like Jimmy Havoc was like, nope, nope. Yeah. You know and what's like, bad when Jimmy Havoc's like, fuck that. Right. <laughs> Jimmy Havoc, of all people, like a man that would probably impale himself if you ask him to, is like, nah, bro, <laughs> I'm good. That's a little too much for me. No, no thanks. Like you. he was still picking his now wife was picking glass out of and it's not even like they use like sugar glass it was glass glass and they were oh, no. she was still picking glass out of his back like days later i was like no no can't do it so okay cat says she'll do one deal what's the if you were wrestling what's the what's the most risque thing you would do as a wrestler like it'd be suicide dives and that's about it i am not doing death matches just because like I would get caught up in the moment and I'm trying to kill somebody for real. <laughs> so like, and cause like some of the, especially with like how some of those guys are, it's mm -hmm. like one, I don't really trust people uh, yes. enough to uh, allow, to leave my safety in their hands. Cause like one wrong move and you can like really do a ton of damage on stuff. Yeah. And like as black people too, like we don't, we scar differently from uh, people that don't have melanin. So none of that for me. Uh, keloids would set in and all types of other stuff. So no. Nice. <laughs> Good. Oh, man. Good. Like, I got like, I had like something removed from my shoulder and I still have this like ugly, like some right. shock. I'm like, nah, bro. I had like a dermatology appointment. Thing. Right. <laughs> like it's nothing serious, but like it looks bad. <laughs> it just looks bad. Like it looks yeah. like you're like, yo, yeah, I got hit with a shoddy. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. <laughs> Like the dude on Gangland that got shot in the stomach with a shotgun. Like, right. And there's all this shit hanging out. And it's like that. It's like a it's plastic like... bag hanging out exactly. his body now. It's gross. Exactly. But yeah, no, like I couldn't do like the deathmatch stuff. Just no. Nah. Like I could do all the high flying things. That's, you know, I could do those things. But like, nah, no, no deathmatch stuff. No bodily fluids, which as with pro wrestling, because sweat is going to be that type of bodily fluid, but like, I don't want nobody's genitals being used as a weapon or anything that was near their genitals being used as a weapon just cause hygiene. I don't trust people. I know mm -hmm. a bunch of them do not shower properly. So, you know, like I all, mean, of, all of Ohio is for killers just looks like they bathe collectively once every three months. So, yeah. You know, I've, I've had a lot of wrestlers walk by me Post match and and they reek and, and right. a lot of them smell a lot of them reek of tobacco 
Right. You know, so like yeah. they'll dip or even they'll smoke weed before a match. And then when they walk past, it just really hits you. And you're thinking, yeah. please shower. I yeah. don't want to buy your merch until you shower. Please do right. that. Yeah. Which goes to another thing. People that like buy used uh, gear. Oh, hell no. That, nope. is, that is a, especially nope. when it says soiled gear. Wait, yeah. what? So yeah, yeah, so like that's a so that's a whole industry of like doesn't matter what sport or entertainment like you can always sell parts of like the costume or whatever it is, but in like pro wrestling and boxing and kickboxing and MMA, you have this subset of people that like to buy like ring gear that's been used during like a fight or a performance, and like you see this more so with women. Yes, like, they. When they sell stuff and like they dudes will pay so much money for soiled ring gear. And I'm like, no, that is yeah. nasty. Like that is a that is a legitimate, like, even if you cause like you have to would have to do so many things. If you send that stuff through the mail, you have to make sure that it's sealed up properly. And like just it there's blood, especially like if you're like a deathmatch wrestler, like Come yeah. on now, that is gross. That is nasty. <laughs> it was like like Jimmy Havoc does that with like some of his like white when he wears the big match whites. Yeah, mm -hmm. I've seen him do that before. Yeah, and like that, I mean, I get that with him because he does it. It's a it's a whole thing. It's almost like an art piece, like when he does it, right? Yeah. But like a lot of times when folks just, it's like, oh yeah, you know, soiled ring gear. And I'm like, eh. <laughs> you <Yeah>. know, <laughs> like I can understand wanting. You know, Andre the Giant and Hulk Hogan's ring gear that they wore in their legendary match, and you have that stuff framed. Framed, yes. I don't yeah. trust guys, and dudes are nasty, so I don't think that they're going to be framing any of this gear. It's yeah. quite way more nefarious than that. But yeah, look, I know, I know, dudes who have bought women's wrestlers' gear, and in the back of my mind, I'm thinking. Are you making your significant other wear this stuff as some weird reverse cosplay stuff for you? No. Like, oh, you know, that's, weird. that's nasty, you know. And I thought about that, but then at the same token, I'm thinking, I if I bought any gear, it would be to frame it, but it'd be something commemorative, right? You know, or if it went to charity or something, fine, like the, the proceeds. But nah, you better, you damn sure better clean that before I get it. I am not taking no soul <laughs> anyway. But that's the thing, Dave. That's the, that's the key. That's the, that's it has the, yeah. to be soiled. Has to be soiled. Nah, I'm good. <laughs> I, don't, I, I don't need I don't need creator wrestler girls bodily fluids. Nah, I'm good. No, I'm, I'm, I'm chilling. I'm good. Yeah. So, yeah, but there's a whole market for it. A whole market. Like, because because we all used to joke about how, like, in Japan, you can buy, uh, like, used schoolgirl panties in, like, what? vending machines. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. In vending yeah. machines? Yeah. yeah. There is, Japan has monetized every aspect of sex possible. It's ridiculous. Yes. I know. That's not a joke. Like, it's, it's for real. Like, you could get, even if it's not sex, it could be just, like, some sort of, like, intimate act. There's a place for it. Like, there is... I'm trying right. to find the documentary and send it to you, but there is a place where you can go and have a girl clean out your ears with a Q-tip. Wait, what? Yeah, like your girlfriend would do, essentially. Okay. It's it's. I have it's, never cleaned Mike's ears, and I never plan to. Oh yeah, hey, I mean, if you do, <laughs> that's like I will that's never. That's, that's I feel like the, that's tame compared to everything else we're talking that's, about. That's, that's I, uh, like look, look. The inside of the ear is an erogenous zone. <laughs> it is? Yeah. I, uh, yeah. Going in there, man. Yeah. Okay. So I, I want to circle back. And for those just tuning in, this is the podcast champs with Damon and Dio, special uh, special guest, the Cruiser Cat, uh, talking what nastiness would you do for your career, especially in pro wrestling? Now, a lot of people on Twitter are giving Priscilla a lot of crap the last maybe hour or so for being, quote, unquote, nasty, yada, yada, yada which has required her to break kayfabe and say, you know, it was fake, right? It wasn't real tampon, whatever. Right. Here's the thing. Y'all complaining about Priscilla doing it, but whenever Joey Ryan pulls out the, the dreaded lollipop of doom out of his crotch zone. Dudes is in there. Thank you. 
Yeah, like, put it in my mouth. <laughs> right. I'm like, Ugh. like I was. Uh, who is it? I forgot who it was on Not Your Demo Pod, but they got the lollipop, and I was like, no, couldn't have been me. Couldn't have been me. Could not have been me. And like, but here's the other thing too, and not just Joey Ryan, but mankind used to literally keep Mr. Sacco next to his nuts. True. Y'all ain't saying nothing about that now. Oh yeah, Whenever, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Mr. Sacco was down into it, all the way down into yeah. And then on top of that, right? So that's one thing. And two, like the mandible claw in itself is disgusting. Like putting fingers in someone's mouth. There, there's so many things that could go wrong there, especially if somebody has like a weak gag reflex. <laughs> but so Rikishi. Too young does it too, by the way. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Rikishi. A whole ass. A whole ass in your face. Like, I'm talking your nose, everything is right there. Big Samoan cheeks just in your face. <laughs> <laughs> right there. Nobody uh -huh. saying anything about that. Folks are like, oh my God, it's great. I mean, it's the same thing. It's essentially, it's the same type of stuff. But like, I don't know, maybe it's just because it's white nonsense this time. The folks are like, Ugh. but this was like, it was super graphic because Menstruation is a taboo topic amongst mm -hmm. people, period, especially when it's like when men are talking about it because it's like this off limits thing. It's like, nah, like if you have a girlfriend and then you actually talk, you should know about this stuff. Damn it. You're welcome. Yeah. Look, I don't ask these questions. I, the Dude, viewer has learned. You? What are you talking about? You don't know. I'm 39. I don't ask these questions. You know, I never learned about the birds and the bees from my parents. It was one of those things where I just figured them out on my own. But in this case, I never had the urge to ask these questions, but I felt the need to ask yesterday and I got my answer. So thank you to my girlfriend for telling me about that kind of stuff. But I feel that the last two weeks and Dio can talk about this on air. I feel like I've been educated on a lot of things that I have been fooled by in terms oh, of- Oh yeah. I've been trying to score him on the angles and he just doesn't get it. Well, like selfie angles and things like that. Like I don't know these things. Oh, yeah. So like the, the weirdo underneath like- no, you like, like so he's. I'm talking. So when you're looking at like at like people's pictures on like Instagram, yeah. he can't tell when it's like he'll be like he'll send something and we're like, oh yeah, look at this, and I'm like, that's it's an illusion. It's angles that <laughs> the, the ass ain't that big, bro. The ass yeah. ain't that big, bro. <laughs> like it's and <laughs> me as like since I'm a photographer, like I already know the different like poses that people do. So like I automatically spot the sit there stuff and I'm like, ah, I got a bust your bubble guy. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, because this came up because Dio had mentioned that there was a, a wrestler that got fake butt implants. Yeah. I don't know if you want to drop her name or not, but no, I'm not. <laughs> okay. So I was mortified by this. I, I was mortified because I'm thinking, wait, you wrestle with, with butt implants? Like, how is that humanly possible without you rupturing one? I mean, you can wrestle with breast implants, Charlotte, but Butt implants? So, really? So that's the thing. It's not, isn't it? I don't think it's implants. I'm pretty sure it is a fat transfer. It's probably what happens okay. in these situations, right? So you have different ways of doing butt implants. Sorry, this is from my job. So I know. This is true life, baby. True life. Yeah. So like, I get to see the bad stuff in uh, like lawsuits and stuff like that. So it's always when something goes wrong, uh, procedure is botched and so on and so forth. So you have fat transfers where somebody, well, they'll take like fat from one part of the body and inject it to another to make it look bigger. Mm -hmm. Then you'll have like, you have two different types of implants that you can put in. So there's the ones that go underneath the muscle and then push the muscle out. And then you yes. have the stuff that's on top of it. And those are the worst ones. Because like, if you've ever seen like the bad, like, uh, on whether it's world star or twitter or wherever you'll see where like somebody's got the implant and like they'll grab it and they can like flip it over in oh. underneath their skin yeah. and oh. like with those there's no way that you could do that in pro wrestling absolutely not you couldn't even do you couldn't do the implants underneath it either because like the if you land on it wrong you're gonna mm -hmm. cut through muscle and rupture like muscles and all that stuff there yeah. Yeah. And like cause a bunch. So you would, it would have to be like, you'd have to have like fat transfers essentially for like pro wrestling. Cause 
It's getting in a car accident multiple times in a match. It just ain't, it ain't going to work. It ain't going to work if you try that. Yeah. But yeah, yeah. No, uh, like implants are one thing. And you can get different types of implants too, like breast implants. Like you can get, mm -hmm. you know, if you just have like your regular everyday, you know, type implant for your standard person. But then they have like heavy duty ones where it's like it's harder to rupture. So what? somebody in pro wrestling is going to have to get the like the heavy duty. So like China back in the day, right? It was during one of the matches that she was wrestling and it ruptured and you could see during the match where it was like it was here and then it just started to deflate because the saline leaked back into her body so okay. so like after that it was like all right gotta make sure if you do you gotta get the the, the rugged joints you know <laughs> the, <laughs> you gotta get the super deluxe <laughs> it's oh god <laughs> gotta i get feel so Dutch lost titty. like it's <laughs> Cat, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just like, just do some squats, bro. Like, stop playing around. Bro, yeah. Like, well, I mean, yeah. Because, <laughs> like, squats will only get you so far, but they can get you pretty, you know, a good ways there. Because I done seen some folks where it's like, and the thing about, like, a lot of this new phase of, like, implants is you don't know how it's going to be years down the yeah. line. Because, like, especially with, like, the, chicks that go not just chicks because it's people period a lot of folks yeah. do this that going just get like folks will just literally inject like industrial grade silicone into their bodies yeah. sometimes it's silicone sometimes like you never really know like if you go because <laughs> like there have been plenty of women and men that have died uh yeah. getting these like showing up in a hotel somebody injects them with like fix a flat so yeah you heard about that a lot in south florida like when i was closer to Miami, because I, I used to live in Fort Lauderdale, which is only like an hour away from Miami. Yeah. You hear about that stuff all the time, that people mm -hmm. just get like like random chemicals, like fucking like yeah. silicone, like caulking in their ass, and you're like, right. why would you do that? What? Right, because they don't know. Because like they'll, yeah. so somebody will go and get it done, and it'll look good, and then they'll say, oh yeah, so I went to so-and-so, it cost me 400 bucks. You don't know what's getting put into your body, because like Industrial grade silicone is completely different from medical grade silicone. And medical grade silicone is wildly expensive by comparison. It's safer, yeah. mm -hmm. but you know, if you're just injecting it directly into your body, like your body doesn't like anything like that being put into it. And a lot of times folks will end up having like crazy fevers after it happens. That's because your body is trying to fight off this foreign body that's been introduced to it. Like it'll essentially encase whatever it is into like a protective field so that nothing so that it can't leak into the body anymore and then they'll have mm -hmm. like these hard like stones of whether it be silicone or fix a flat sometimes it's straight up cement that has been injected yeah. in people's body and like you can't take it out so like it's it's so intertwined in the muscles that like if you take it out you have to take the whole muscle out so it's wild I'm learning so much. I know nothing of these things, and yet y'all are just putting me on to so so much information. I am so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we are. I feel like I, I have been. We are an educational podcast. I feel like I've been siphoned off my whole life to a lot of this stuff. So <laughs> now I'm thinking, I might need a crash course in, in fakery and, and 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 fuckery, as you like to say, deal. Because yeah, this is odd. just. Yeah, there's ridiculous. A, there's an immense amount of fuckery. <laughs> yeah, especially in pro wrestling. Especially in pro yes. wrestling. Which, yeah, which I'm has been. All right. How, how did you not know anything about tampons? Until right. Like this is like that is okay. That is number one. Like anytime I have, well, for me, I had to learn at a very young age because I grew up with a single mother. So I was right. like, she's like, yo, go into the store, pick up the tampons or the tam or whether it be tampons or pads at that time. And it's like, I had to learn quick, real quick what, what this was about. So yeah, like just the simple fact that you've had like significant others and they were they didn't school you on this until yeah, now. Yeah, they're like, he doesn't need to know. He doesn't need to know. Uh, you know what, a lot of that was that, like he didn't need to know. Like I, I had never gone for my mom, you know, that was my dad's department. And whether right. or not my mom even had one, I don't care, but just a matter of, that was up. I cut. I used to cut health class to go to freaking band class. So that just tells you enough right there. Okay, wow, you, wow. I had to do a lot. 
I, I, I had to do a lot of self-learning when, and, and I was telling Mel this the other day, my foray into the birds and the bees were brothers sitting down and essentially make me watch porn at like 15 years old. Like that was the birds and the bees for me. That was it. Yeah, nah. I I feel sorry for the current generation because they are learning the birds and the bees from X videos, which is uh no, it's bad. Oh god, <laughs> yeah, it's not a good look. Oh it's no, not, it's not a good look at all. So if you are getting your sex advice from Pornhub, X videos, any sites, I no, stop it. Just yeah, stop it. but like that's the thing—you don't learn anything in school, so you gotta learn somewhere. And that's the crappy part about the. Uh, I'm going to mail you one of those Your Body and You books. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Kat. Thank you so much. Hey, tell me, and I'm telling you, bro, Damien, the, the Diva Cup's a, jam, a game changer. Bro. No, it really is. <laughs> the Diva Cup is a game what changer. What is this Diva Cups? Okay, do, do you actually want me to show you what a Diva Cup is? Do you have one? <laughs> yeah, I have one. It's a, okay. it's a game changer, dude. Right, feel free. On. Feel free right, while me and Dio pontificate. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, look at look at my cat. I'm, I'll be right back. Okay, hello, cat. There's two. Actually, there's two of them there. Just kidding. Oh, cat, cat, cat. There you go. Yeah. But, so I I know nothing of these things. So I feel very happy that you guys are willing to kind of roll with this on a really special episode of podcast. Very yeah. special episode. <laughs> uh, Melissa suggests that we call this the nasty episode. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. This is the nasty episode. So in, in two words, Dio, can you explain to me? No, not even two words. Give me, give me five words. Kenny Omega going to WWE, five words or less. What are your thoughts? It could actually be awesome. Okay. So I, I, yeah, go ahead. It, it's he especially if he comes through and like, they're not just going to give him money. They're going to end up giving him like creative freedom as well. And if that's good, like Kenny Omega has been like the driving force behind a lot of the creative stuff that whether it be new Japan or the elite or whomever, like he's been the driving force for that the past couple of years. So if he's able to actually like bring that in to the WWE, that'd mm -hmm. be amazing. But Me you know, yeah. He could also get swallowed up by the WWE machine. From what I've read, it's what two million potentially. And Ask guy, it's gonna be more than that. He's gonna to have to have full creative control. I mean, it's one of those things where you have to debut him at the Rumble. You can't debut him on NXT. Oh, yeah, he's no. got to go straight. He's got to go straight through. Oh, he he's does. not. No, there is no NXT unless he specifically asks to be on NXT. But like, no, he has to debut. At the Rumble, he has to have fire. He has to have dope music, and they can't do the bullshit that they did. Uh, I got bad news. I have no idea where it is. And I, okay. I'm going to need it in a couple of days, so I should probably get on that. But probably. <laughs> so, Kat, to catch you up, we're talking about whether or not, in five words or less, basically, what do you think about Kenny Omega potentially going to WWE? In five words or less? Yeah, as a, just a starting point. I said it could actually be awesome, but yeah, that's that was my five. Uh, I don't know, man. <laughs> mine, will, mine will say it's crazy enough to work. Yeah. Yeah. I. It doesn't seem likely. <laughs> so my, actually, no. Anything could happen is my answer because I don't know. Yeah, yeah. I feel about ninety percent certain that I know Marty's going to end up going to NXT. Of course. Um, well, I, I, yeah, that's that's, and we know it's probably because of Deanna if if they're still together at that point. But yeah. me personally, I think if they give him a few right off the gate, or out the bat, I think it probably should be him going after AJ Styles. Absolutely. Ooh, yeah. I mean, that would all, be I a like if, match. If they give him creative control, I feel like he would go. Like, yeah. If he could actually control his destiny, he would go. Mm -hmm. So, so and, and one more thing about about this whole New Japan and, and AEW thing. Uh, what's the deal with everyone obsessing over Okada's thighs? Oh have my you not god! Seen his thighs? Have you I not have, seen but his thighs? I don't. I don't obsess over man thighs. I don't understand. The, okay, no. Did you see those trash ass bell bottoms that he's been wearing the past year? Yes, boys. I have. The long boys. 
Mm -hmm. yeah, hot garbage. <laughs> so the fact that we got to see his muscular, creamy thighs again was <laughs> fantastic. I'm like, like they okay. when when he when he took him when he took that whatever the hell it was off, it was just like the sun came out. Like I was the like, angels started singing. There were oh, trumpets. <laughs> yes. No. Like. It's, you have to understand, I was awake for so long at this point. Like, I literally, I went to work at 5.30 a.m. the day before. Oof. I went to 5 p.m., got off work, went to full set for NXT, Oof. slept for three hours, woke up for Wrestle Kingdom with my friends, and I am absolutely delirious at this point. I see Okada come out, I'm like, wow, he looks so good. I love him so much. Right. He ripped the, the kilt thing off, and the Literally, if her neighbors were any kind of concerned, they oh, yeah. it was like four <laughs> screaming women at like four thirty in the fucking morning. We are absolutely losing it. Like I was like, ah! yeah. <laughs> the legs. <laughs> yes, the legs. Because like the long legs boy fifty was... times in one <laughs> post. <laughs> like, because the long boys were trash. The long boys were trash. They were so bad. They were so bad. Like, I don't know what he was hiding during the time. Crazy. I'm just happy that we got back, like, old school blonde hair. Because, like, I know folks, like, really liked Midlife Crisis Okada. I didn't. <laughs> no, Midlife Crisis Kazu was me. I was like, I love him so much. I, I didn't so, like him. It's so <laughs> relatable. <laughs> It's like, what am I doing with my existence? I used to be somebody. Now I'm... And he had the balloon. He was like, yeah, holding a balloon. Hi. Like, I didn't like it. I was like, this is, I don't like change. <laughs> I felt like Stewie when somebody ripped off a chunk of the house. Like, I don't like change. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, no, Okada's thighs. I'm surprised somebody hasn't made a Twitter account called Okada's thighs. It's, uh, yeah. I'm sure they'll rival Tyler Bates' thighs if everything that I hear from people, because he's another one that people talk about his legs all the time. I don't know. His legs are fantastic. They are fantastic, but Okada's are this smooth. What? Yeah, because they're like, they're like not too muscular, but like, you know, like, you know that, that gift of that lady? When she's like at the game show and she like rubs his legs. Oh yeah, I saw it, yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Like <laughs> she's like, Oh, <laughs> amazing! <laughs> Which I found out to be that to be hilarious because I've been binge watching Terrace House the past uh, week or so, and she's one of the like commentators on that, and that was just hilarious to me. But yeah, like he because they're they're just perfect. They're they're just, like they're goals for me. That would be goals because they're 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 nicely shaped. They're not yeah. crazy like vascular because sometimes yes. like. Like, look at Brian Cage. Them shits look vascular. terrible. Vascular. Very vascular. And it's like, <laughs> mm, no, that's too much. That's too much. Uh, I don't I don't like that. Now, Okada, you know, is it, that's a, it's, it's good. It's just perfect. It's it's just the right amount of everything. Tyler Bate, too vascular for me. You know, uh, the only vascular ones that I could say, I'm like, you know what? Yeah. Drew McIntyre. Really? Yeah. Yeah, that's a that's like Drew McIntyre is really body goals. Like I have mm. a similar, I've got wider shoulders, narrow hips, big thighs. So I'm like, that's body goals for me right there. That is body goals for me. Didn't you say, Kat, that you want to turn into uh, my man Ishii? Yeah, dude, I'm trying. Ishii. I'm like, <laughs> I want to be, I want to be so beefy. I'm like, come on. <laughs> Like, I love Ishii so much. He is just every angry uh, uncle that we have. <laughs> his little glasses are so cute. Him and his little and his little conference glasses. Like, yeah, you know, Uncle <laughs> Ishii. <laughs> it's so good because like I always go back to like the match with him and Kenny Omega, and like Kenny's like smacking him in the head. Like two minutes later, Kenny's bleeding out the mouth. I was like, yes, yeah, yes. It's yeah. the best. It's the best. Uh, Ishii yeah. reminds you of, like your cool ass uncle at the cookout. Like he's just yeah, there, absolutely. silently in the corner, and if you want to talk to him, he'll just like listen to you, and he's like, mm -hmm. "Yep, yep." And he's and he's wearing the he's wearing the wife beater in the corner, just you know, at the cookout. You know, no like, one, no one's messing with him. He knows you're not supposed to have a sip of the alcohol, but you know he gives you a sip of the alcohol just to, you know because he's cool like that. He's cool. Low key, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> 
So, okay, this is actually a good segue before we get out of here. What New Japan wrestlers would you invite to the cookout? Mm, to the cookout? Mm. LIJ, for sure. Oh, yeah. LIJ, LIJ, the entirety of LIJ. The entirety of LIJ. Like, I'd sit there. I need I need nail advice from Bushi. Like, yes. so bad. His nails are always on point. Always has the best masks. And anybody that can, like... Because he does like the best poison mist, period. Because mm. it gets he gets full coverage, not just yes. like a little bit of the head. No, he gets the head to like mid torso. Yeah, you're like, <laughs> How? Uh, it's ooh. a stream when he spits it out. It's pretty. It's really impressive. Oh, Tama Tonga and uh, Tonga Loa absolutely are getting. Uh, or rather, the Fire yeah. Squad are all getting because they're black anyway. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In the chat, Moses is saying Fale, Minoru, and Yano get invited to the cookout. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Minoru's another one. He goes to the cookout even if you don't want him to go. Oh, yeah. He's showing up. I'm not saying shit to him. I'm, nah, I'm not, hell no. Nah. Hell no. You let him go. You're like, yeah, sure. Take yeah, yeah. You want to say, cool. cool. Like, cool. I murder dad. You, you, you bring whatever you want. It's fine. He's not even murder. He's like murder grandpa at this point. <laughs> yeah. He's like, you just don't fuck with him. You're just like, you see him? You acknowledge he's there, and then you don't talk to him as like, oh. <laughs> Exactly. It's like, yo, let it, let it rock. Just let it rock. Don't, yeah. don't, don't, don't. So, don't, is it safe work. to say that my man, uh, what's his face? Would you invite Chris Jericho to the cookout? The New Japan version of Chris Jericho? No, bullshit makeup. Hell no. Only to no. roast him. Only to roast him. Yeah, he's he's getting the roast. <laughs> like the roast hand is coming out immediately, boy. Like it is. What are you doing, man? What are you doing? You are a legend. You out here looking crazy. <laughs> yeah. I think Naito probably have the best weed. For sure. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Let me see. I gotta look at the New Japan roster real quick. What about Zack Saber Jr.? Does he get invited to the cookout? He's gonna bring vegan mac and cheese, which could either oh. be a really good thing or a really bad thing. It's a really bad thing, so I'm saying no on that oh, one. I've had really good vegan mac and cheese before. I have never. So I feel like he'd bring good beer. Yeah, he'd bring like that good ass cider and shit. That's like no, he'd probably bring some like beer that one of his band members does, and I'm no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I would say Ibushi, but no, because he he's something. too pretty for the cookout. No, yeah. he is going to set something on fire. Mm. Like he is absolutely going to pull out like Roman candles out of nowhere. <laughs> it's, it's gonna happen, so. No. <laughs> and do a moonsault off of it. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Somebody's car is getting moonsaulted off of. Oh, ACH, because ACH is essentially New Japan. So me and him could talk like anime the whole time. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah your cool anime cousin. E exactly. ACH like, is the cool anime cousin. Yeah, mm -hmm. He's giving he's giving you like all the deep cuts <laughs> of anime that you need to watch. I don't want Terry Adam to be there because he's just gonna try to sell you bootlegs the entire time. Exactly. Exactly. And it's going to be like those bootlegs where like somebody is like in the front row and you can see their head walking and it interrupts the entire movie. Yeah. Bad bootlegs. So you're just yeah. Like, you know, I feel like, I feel like Kushida shows up and at first you don't want to let Kushida in, but like, because he's, he keeps coming and asking, you're going to be like, all right, man, whatever. Just, just yeah. Don't talk to nobody. <laughs> just, just, just stay over there. Be quiet. Yeah. In your Marty McFly vest, just don't, don't bother anybody. Just stay right. Oh, he's so cute. Leave him alone. I let him in because he's like, you yeah, know, bless your heart. You, can you know what? Juice Robinson is not invited to the cookout. He is not. Nope. Nope. Not invited to nope. Juice ain't coming. He got a Sorry. twist. Come on. Nah, <laughs> nope. Mm. He's also still racially ambiguous. We don't know yet. But you are. So I'm like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. So what is Juice Robinson right now? Is he a pirate? Is he a disco star? I don't get it. I Big do not Grateful Dead Pirate. Dead pirate. I, that, yeah, Grateful I Dead Pirate. Yeah, oh, uh, Fusion Thunder Liger is definitely getting uh, brought in. Oh, Liger, oh, yeah. Liger can come. Yeah. 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 Liger's coming. It's actually probably his cookout. We're just there. Right. Yeah. <laughs> yeah exactly. <laughs> it's sponsored by Liger at this point. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Michael uh, Elgin's not invited. He can't come yeah. at all. Uh, Who? Exactly. Elgin. Exactly. Yeah. Jeff Cobb can come. Jeff Cobb, absolutely, because he's gonna bring like some good, like roasted pig from like Guam. <laughs> be amazing. <laughs> Rocky uh, Romero. You know, I'm gonna say I rock with Rocky. I'm cool with him. I'm cool with him. The Bucks can't come. Bucks can't come. 
Taguchi can't come because he's gonna be dancing and no Taguchi to come. I want Taguchi there. I am inviting Taguchi to the cookout. <laughs> You, but you got to keep an eye on him then, because because he'll be the drunk uncle. He'll be the drunk uncle dancing around, and everyone's either a you claim him or b nobody knows him. So, right. and like I'm gonna say, Rapongi 3K, you can bring them because we need pretty. So and we yeah, need karaoke. Yeah, yeah. Taiji can't come. Taiji can't come. <laughs> no, he can't. No, the ballet can come, but he can't come. Does any of the Bullet Club? Do they come beside like the? I mean the elite. Is any of the elite invited? Nobody. Nope. <laughs> I'm not invited. Nan, one of them. Like I would say Hangman, but like all just with of the, the name, I can't people, bring him. They can be like, huh? Who's this tall white boy with a noose? What? <laughs> <laughs> what, is this? what is going on here, sir? What is going on here? Cat, for context, <laughs> we have said in previous episodes that he needs to drop the hangman name if he gets signed to the major companies. It's like, no, bro, you can't be in the States and be calling yourself hangman. I'm sorry. Yeah. Especially in certain parts of the country. Just no. Yeah. No. Yeah, yeah I'm uh, sure. But for the right oh, see, so no, just, I don't know yeah. if Cody's invited. Cody's see? not invited. No. Nope. 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 Like he would, Cody feels like the type of dude that would be devil's advocate for Trump. And that ain't gonna go over for anybody. Uh, so do you invite Brandy? No, 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 no. Because <laughs> if Brandy's there, Cody's gonna show up drunk two hours later, <laughs> demanding, <laughs> demanding to be let into the party. So no, it's not gonna happen. Oh my god! Uh, who else? Oh, as someone in the chat said, Cody brings Brandy because she'll bring seasoned dishes. I don't think she would bring seasoned dishes though. That's the thing. I, I think she don't I don't think she's got skills in the kitchen. She might have some Lacey Evan skills, and which I hope not. Because no. yeah. what about Trent? Somebody said Trent. Yeah. Chucky e. T. I could I can see them. They, they, yeah. they probably got bomb weed. They like McGriddles, so they can come. Yo, McGriddles are McGriddles. McGriddles are like McGriddles right. are the truth. Let me they tell you are. something. Like a whole meal in one sandwich is amazing. Yes. Uh, uh, let's see who else. Yeah, no, Zach Sabres Jr. is definitely not coming. We already said that. Uh, Unless he brings uh, good beer, he can't come. Uh, he's not, I'm not letting him in at all. Uh, <laughs> like, yeah. All right. Well, Okada is Okada welcome to the cookout? Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Because they'll bring money. It, no. He. He is gifting everybody a good amount of money. Like it's it's gonna be like, yo. His, his gift to me is showing up because he's <laughs> he's Okada too. Like he, yeah. he's like the famous family member that like he went on to do just like he's like local famous. Uh -huh. He comes by and like always blesses everybody with like you know money and or he'll pay for like some really good food to cater. Yeah, yeah. he yeah he's definitely coming through. Uh, in the chat, Eugene said Chuck E. T. would be cool for like an hour. Then he'll pick a fight with somebody. Yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> the Briscoes can't come either. Nah, Briscoes Fun can't now. come though. Because then it's everybody's getting. Yeah. Red then, Shoes is there. Red Shoes comes. Red Shoes yes. comes. Red Shoes got to keep the peace. Like, he's got to mm -hmm. keep the peace. Yeah, he's like, you good? He's like the guy that walks around and says, you good to everybody? <laughs> yeah. You good? You good? You good? Like, who is this guy? Is he like the host? Is he? What is he? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So Jay I love White, Jay oh White gonna show, Jay White's gonna show up with his black girlfriend. I I I just feel like that's how that would happen. And he'd be like, you know what? All right, yeah. all right, bro. We're, 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 we'll rock with you. We'll rock with you. You know what's funny? I never even thought about that, but yeah, Jay White would show up with his black girlfriend. Yeah, absolutely. Like that's it's gonna happen. Uh and who'll be the one that everybody gives pounds to? Like exactly when, when like, he walks yeah, in. <laughs> Cause you know we always got that we always got that one white white guy in the crew that like he just has respect because he's respectful of everybody else's culture. Right. So yeah. like he'll come through and just be like, "I've done like the craziest shit possible to get everybody's acceptance." Mm -hmm. So yeah, yeah, yeah. Jay White fits that description. I think who else would? I think from New Japan is only invited to the cookout. Yeah, see exactly. Someone in the, uh, Eugene said he gets hella daps. If he comes through, so yeah, Jay White gets a whole gets a whole bunch of love. I would not let uh, Yujiro Takahashi in because 
I feel like he'd get arrested for bringing his entourage, and then that's the end of the cookout. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, people gonna fight over his ladies, and then that that's a wrap. So, nah. I feel like Goto gets to go. Nope, I don't bring Goto. Why don't bring Goto? Because Goto fucks shit up. You're right. Yeah, no, he's gonna like he is going to sit there and like go shot for shot with your uncle. That's not gonna go well. So <laughs> him and Suzuki probably get drunk in the corner and then they start fighting each other. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Like somebody's gonna somebody is absolutely gonna die. Kojima. Kojima because he's gonna bring all the best bread. Like mm, yeah. he's gonna bring like for no reason, like Fresh why are you 27 loaves of bread? I don't care, it's delicious. But uh okay, so universally, the band list Cody, yeah, <laughs> yep. that's the band list. Cody, Zach Saber Jr., Juice I'm Robinson, also say Osprey as well. I'm not letting Osprey in either. This band is a fucking dickhead. Yep, okay, so. <laughs> Osprey. Time bomb can come, and he brings Daryl. So I'm good with that. Oh, yeah, he got. He brings Daryl. He brings Daryl's girl and the little baby. So yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Hama can't come either because he's going to try to. Even now that he's hit, he's like, you know, healed. He is going to try to like headbutt off the roof. No, he can't come. Yeah, either. no, no. So he can't come. Yujiro Takahashi can't come. You said Tanahashi, no. Uh, ooh, did you say Tanahashi? No one but a Tanahashi. Auntie, his auntie. You have to let him go. He has, yeah, because he's like he has. He'll be like, the one cooking in the apron, shirtless. Absolutely. Wow, we'll grilling. just be staring at them titties the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> he is. He is that busty aunt. That's 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 who Tanahashi is. It's amazing. Oh my God. And we but said like, no, he absolutely has like I've been divorced three times. Black women hair. Like it's it's. Oh 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 yeah, he drives oh. a 2012. Ultima. <laughs> You're absolutely right. <laughs> he reminds me of my aunt. Every time I see him, I'm like, that is my auntie's hair. Yeah. Where did he get that leave from? He must have yeah. gone down to South Florida. <laughs> yeah, Yoshihashi. He's got like black women hair he's from like seven. Like... The two of them together, just like in the corner talking mash about everybody. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. They're, 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 they're spilling all the dirt. Yeah. Oh, she mm -hmm. They are spilling the tea. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and judging everybody. Yeah. Yeah, they're the two that are judging Jay White for bringing his black girlfriend. Absolutely, yeah. I can't yeah. have black girlfriend for right. <laughs> <laughs> you can't How come she could come, but Brandy you can't. can't. Can't Taka's band? <laughs> because, That's exactly right. Yeah, you, <laughs> you can't bring Taka because Taka's like the dude that went to jail and he still hasn't like shaken off the jail mentality yet. Nope. So like he's walking around, he's like got a phone book taped to his <laughs> to his chest <laughs> in case somebody tries to shake him. <laughs> <laughs> he steals every pen off the table. Oh no! no. <laughs> it's like, yo, I go in, I go into the bathroom. My to my toothbrush is gone. Like, what the fuck is going on? <laughs> <laughs> like, uh, I think I think right now that's the perfect way to end this show just because this cookout is probably the best thing we would probably advertise this and show it on New Japan World because yeah, yeah, like he's got a bag of Pruno that he pulls out of his bag. Oh just, no. <laughs> Yo, it's been in it's been in the toilet tank for about two weeks. It's that good shit. <laughs> oh god. <laughs> So for those tuning in, thank you for tuning in on YouTube. This will be up on SoundCloud, iTunes, Stitcher, and a few other places uh, probably by tomorrow. Thank you on behalf of myself and Dio, and thank you, Kat, for joining us. You can find Kat at what on Twitter, Kat? Uh, at ArtXcore, A-R-T-X-C-O-R-E. And if anyone could see on the video her beautiful artwork in the background, she is a phenomenal artist. We... Oh, hold on. I'm terrible. Here. There. There, it is. there you go. Give her money. <laughs> yeah. Feed my cats. You see that? That fat piece of shit right there? He you gotta go. eat. <laughs> he eats too much, but he needs to eat more. <laughs> So buy her artwork. Find her on Twitter and buy her artwork. So you can find me on Twitter at DamonG347DO at I'm Just DEO. And we will catch you next time. Later, folks. 